how, Tim, how, tr how tr challenging is it when you're not on the field to get into the playbook, when, uh, when, like, like this last su Saturday, uh, Sunday, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, I've lost track of the days. But when you only have that many plays, how limiting is it to try to keep drives going? Yeah, yeah, no, it, uh, you know, that's a definite challenge. Um, and, and we have nobody to blame but ourselves for that in terms of not giving ourselves and, you know, uh, uh, enough opportunities. Um, it, it, it makes it makes it tough to be able to to get into a rhythm in terms of being able to, to set some things up, uh, use plays that complement one another, um, and, and really uh, be able to use everything that we have on the call sheet. So we need to do a better job. Um, obviously, I mean that, that that's that's stating the obvious there, but we need to do a better job of of you know converting on third down. Uh, I thought we did a good job of not being in third and forevers. I think the the longest one we have I think was a third and seven. Um, but we need to do a better job converting those manageable third downs to, in order to, to, to be able to utilize the, the entire call sheet. What did you see good and bad out of Jalen Duncan in his first extended yeah. action? Yeah, uh, Jalen was out there. He competed. Um, you know, uh, um, he, 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 he fought, uh, and, and he did a good job for the most part blocking his man, um, you know, kind of kind of being baptized by fire there. Obviously, there's some things that, that you know, with your first game experience uh, are going to go along with it in terms of um, – uh, how fast it really is, uh, how intense it really is, and, and what the expectation is for us in, in, in terms of play style. But uh, overall, Jalen did a good job for us when we needed him to step up. You got into the end zone twice on Sunday, which for the last month that wasn't the worst performance, but both of those plays were kind of trick plays. Um, is that a bit of concern that it's taking some weird gadget play to score? Or No. I mean, as long as those plays score. Will's... Uh, 15th in time to throw his first in average depth of target. So is that a credit to him that uh, with not that much time to throw, he's able to, to go downfield? Or does it suggest things aren't matching up between protection and read? I mean, 15th in the entire NFL. So he has the average amount of time to throw. Yeah, um, yeah I don't know if that's really saying anything other than the fact that he's uh, making some decisions to punt the ball downfield. Um, and uh, yeah, like always, we've got to do a better job protecting them and giving them more time to throw. But um, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if that's saying much. What are some things you're seeing from him maybe now that you didn't see against the Falcons, maybe his first time out as far as big improvements? Yeah, um, I mean, he's tough. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, um, just looking over the past couple of weeks, not that that was ever questioned, but just looking over the past couple of weeks in terms of, uh, you know, kind of. You know, taking some hits. Um, he stands in there. He, he he's not afraid to uh, go ahead and, and, and deliver uh, under pressure. Um, you showed last week. You know, a couple times the ability to extend, which is good. Now we need him to make better decisions when he does that, right? But it was good to see him be able to get out of the pocket um, and, and keep his eyes downfield. Uh, but he can't expose the ball like that. Um, and and just again, just like we talked about last week, just his, his general overall command in terms of uh, being to handle some of the different checks, some of the different uh, uh, protection adjustments, things along those lines. What's that process been like between you and him just as far as beginning of the week, you determine what's going to be up, what's mm -hmm. going to be down? How has that been for you? It's been, it's been good. He's been really receptive. Um, you know, it's a collective effort in there with, with you know, uh, obviously myself, Charles, you know, Ryan's in there doing a good job, Malik's in there, and, and really um, – Kind of going through and installing the game plan, letting them know what the plan is, what the plan of attack is, uh, you know, what we need to do in order to win the football game, um, and then really uh, provide my insight, provide our insight from the coaching side, and then and then having a source like Ryan in there to be able to go and and tell him what it's what it's really like. It's easy for me to sit there in an air conditioned meeting room to tell him that, but uh, for a guy who's who's done it at a high level like RT has, um, you know, it's a testament to him and in, in, in you know his his willingness and ability. Uh, uh, to do everything we can to, to, to help the team win. Is there a lot of leeway for Will to be like, you know, I remember this work and I, I want to go back to that. I like this play. I don't like that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you know, growing up in, in the profession, one of the, the big lessons that was taught to me is is uh, if you want to play to work, make sure the player likes it. Uh, if, if, if they like the play, uh, there's going to be a higher chance of him figuring out a way to make it work. So, uh, you know, no matter what the experience level at that point in time is, if, if there's something that he likes or if there's something he feels really comfortable with, we'd be foolish not to call. Tim, when you guys have struggled with football, how much is it like you to find a way to inject some confidence or light within your play? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, that, that's a big burden on me. 
Oh, for sure. Um, you know, just going back continually, uh, being able to look at, at, at different opportunities uh, where maybe I, I could have done something different or called something different. Um, so I've, I've got to do a better job doing that. And then I've got to do a better job giving us more opportunities and putting us in a position to have more than whatever it was, 37 shots on goal. Because uh, at that point in time, it, it, you know, it, like we talked about earlier, there's just not enough opportunities to do that. You've looked at yourself, obviously, you personally aren't jumping offside, having a holding penalty or something. Mm-hmm. What did you identify in the play calls that you have to do on the early downs to have better Um. Yeah, just continue to really, just to continue to really lean on our on our proven players. Um, continuing to lean on Derek, uh, you know he's a great player, has been for a long time. Continuing to give him opportunities uh, to keep us on on track uh, and, and and make a big play for us. Um, so so just I would say that that's the biggest thing. Speaking of Derek, looking at the Panthers' rush defense towards the bottom end of the league, how do you capitalize on that, take advantage, and get him going early on Sunday? Yeah, yeah, find ways to to make sure we get uh, uh, you know zero ninety five blocked. Those are two disruptive players, probably as as disruptive as as we've seen. Um, we got to make sure we're doing a good job taking care of those two up front. Uh, and if we do that, you know we're going to have an opportunity to get Derek going. Always, Derek always talking about things he needs to do better. He can run harder, he can make better reads himself. Do you think you're consistently giving him enough room to operate or uh, he getting hit in the backfield too much? Um, like consistent, like enough room as far as literal room, like space? Yeah, like room to, to be able to get into space uh, and get kind of going. Mm-hmm. Yep. You feel like on a consistent basis, yep. the holes have been there? I mean, as consistent as, as there's obviously there's going to be times where there's misreads and, and misruns for sure. Um, uh, but, you know, we're, we're doing our best to make sure that we're putting our guys um, in a position up front to be able to create those angles and be able to, to execute those blocks and, and create those blocks. So uh, it's always going to be better, obviously. I mean, the, the goal of every play when we, when, when, when we put in a run is, is to find a way to get Derek untouched into the end zone. So, you know, it, 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 that's always the goal. We've got to do a better job of making sure that uh, we're giving Derek more space, but uh, there's definitely been opportunities for us to be able to take advantage of it. A lot of rookies have gotten their opportunity to show what they can do this year. Uh, how's Colton Dow coming along yeah. in terms? I know he's working on special teams. But sure. How's he done in terms of uh, maybe getting himself ready for an opportunity to play on offense? Yeah, he's uh, he's he's you know in in a, a interesting spot because he's kind of got to be the guy who's who's got. Um, the ability to go in and fill in multiple multiple positions. Um, so he's done a great job uh, with with Rob and, and really diving into the to the playbook and the game plan and making sure that that he is that guy that we can trust to go out there and and, and play uh, multiple spots if needed. Tim, in what ways have you maybe seen the the veteran players on your unit, whether it be a Derek who you were just talking about, DeAndre, even Ryan, now that he's a backup, how have you seen them maybe try to like inject confidence? Uh, or, or like set that example, even though things haven't gone as you guys. Have yeah, done. yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's. Uh, yeah, nobody wants to be in the spot, uh, but I, I, again, it, I think it's a true testament to the people that we have in our building, uh, in in the offensive room, to be able to watch them and in, in, in how they approached yesterday, in terms of coming out and, and figuring out a way to to get going, uh, get out there during during the walkthrough and, and start with the the installation. Uh, in the practice, and then again attacking today, um, you know, with that same type of energy and enthusiasm. Uh, it's not always easy, um, and, and you know, especially in the situation right now. But those guys have done a great job of of coming in and setting the example and really setting the tone for the rest of the room. Thank you, thank you, thank thank you guys. You. Appreciate it. I guess, I guess, right out of the gate, just what you're seeing from uh, Bryce Young, just his development, maybe over the first part of his career. Yeah, I think he. Uh, I think the thing that showed up as of late is he's using his athleticism a little bit more, um, especially in those critical situations. You see him scrambling a little bit to pick up some first downs. Um, it's tough hanging in the pocket, going through his progressions, going through his reads, um, has a quick release, able to get the ball out. Uh, he's been finding the open guy, feeling. Um, I mean, that's a big part of what they do, who he is. Um, but I think he's got good understanding. There's a lot of similarities just from Indy with Frank and kind of what they were doing there that show up. Um, but I think there's been some good things from them. Yeah, um, 
I mean, I think it's. I think it all goes together a little bit. Um, I mean, there's times the ball's getting out where we got to be a little bit tighter and hopefully get them to hold it a little bit. I mean, there were some opportunities on Sunday where we won or we had a game coming free and we were coordinated and and the ball's getting out. I think other times, just our ability to to win at times, and then there's just the coordination, right? The coordination of what we're trying to do for guys being on the same page, being able to affect them. But again, it comes down to pass rush. It comes down to coverage. I think it takes all 11. Um, and when we're getting one, we're not getting the other. When we're getting the other, we're not getting the one, right? So just continuing to emphasize that, that it takes all 11 to, to help the front and it takes all 11 to help the back end. Angry about the lack of production. Yeah, I'm sure they're frustrated. I'm sure they're frustrated with it. Um, I mean, we got high expectations, right? They got high expectations for themselves. We got high expectations for them. Um, so I'm sure they're frustrated with it, and hopefully they continue to work and get back at home this week. We can get revved up again and see where this thing goes. For your corners, what goes into that process when they're in man defense to determine, okay? You can go at the to the line of scrimmage and disrupt, or I need you to play hard. What goes into that? Yeah, I think some of that depends on the situation, right? Is it a third and shorter? Is it third and longer? Is there opportunities for me to get picked? A lot of that, the stacks, the bunches, there's a lot of elements to that. Um, I mean, I, I think their comfort level with what they want to do, they want to be pressed, they want to play off. Our guys have done a little bit of both. Um, I've never really dictated to them when the coverage allows what they can do, what they can't do. Um, I think that's a, a personal decision, just comfort level. But at the same time, they got to be sp smart and handle the responsibility, understand the situation and what can come as a result of being pressed in certain situations, what would come as a result of being off in certain situations. With a guy like Christian Fulton, he's probably a better press corner. Would you like to get him more opportunities to, to press to, to showcase that? Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, he does both. I mean, I think you saw on Sunday, there was times he was off and there was times he was pressed, right? And um, so he does both. And I think just based on the call, based on the defense, what we're seeing, the matchup, I think is a big part of it as well. Who you're going against, the ability to take advantage of press and actually disrupt the route, the line of scrimmage and not get beat. You get beat off the line and you're impressed. It's a tough down, right? So I think a lot of things come into that. Um, but like I said, I think those guys, if, if they have a good comfort level and confidence in doing it, I think there's opportunities for them to do it. Roger, is, is it a development thing trying to get him more reps on the outside to see if he can do it, or is it just numbers? Yeah, I think down? it's it's week to week, you know, like just kind of where we're at. s and has been out um, based on game plan, what we're trying to do, where we're at. Uh, the safety position comes into play. The nickel position comes into play. So, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts as this thing's kind of went on here. Uh, these past few weeks, and he's done it. I mean, he, he played out there last year a ton for us, um, was playing good for us inside as well early in the year. So, I mean, it's it's good to have the versatility piece. I know it's probably not ideal at times to be going back and forth, but at the same time, we got to do based on game plan and, and personnel what we got to do. When you got a guy like Thielen that you're going against, how crucial does that slot position or the dime position end up? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big, big spot, right? They're going to find ways to get them the ball. I think uh, the ability to tackle is going to be big in there. Um, the, obviously, the ability to cover them, to be able to play with leverage, understand where your help's at. Um, he's got a really good knack for finding the dead space and zones. Um, it's going to take two guys to be able to break and tackle them and do those things in those situations. So um, it's going to be a big challenge for us, whoever's in, the, in there for us. Had a knack for finding the ball with an interception or a fumble, that sort of thing. Is that something that is just kind of innate to some guys, or is it something that you can kind of teach and coach guys to be more instinctive to the ball? I think there's a little bit of both. I do. I think uh, instincts play a role in it. There's guys that everybody will classify as ball hawks, so to speak, right? Because they have a knack for finding the football. But at the same time, I think there's more we can do, right? There's more we can do in terms of. Uh, forcing them or creating them into turnovers. A little bit of it goes into how how tight we're playing at times, how much pressure we're able to get at times. I mean, there's times we're close, like just two off the rip from last week. Jeff's close in there. Weave was really close in there on one. Um, but just for us as a coaching staff is continue to emphasize and make sure we're pointing out when we're missing the opportunities to attack the ball, right? That's the biggest thing. and. And hopefully we can get in more situations where we're able to disrupt and, and cause some turnovers.
you see that as an opportunity going up against a rookie quarterback who has turned the ball over? Yeah, I mean, if we're all in the, all all coordinated, all playing our game, you would like to think that regardless of whoever we're playing, that we're able to apply some pressure, make some errant throws, whatever that might be, and get our hands on some footballs. Thank you, appreciate yep. it. Yes, and, and Art Rooney, Sportsmanship Award, how, how deserving you think he is of that? Yeah, I mean, very, very proud of what Morgan has done, and uh, he's obviously deserving. Um, you know, I know it's uh, all 32 teams get uh, a vote on it, and they, they have their representative, but I'm really proud of uh, Morgan being ours. Mike mentioned Monty Rice as a guy that was challenged to step up on special teams to earn defensive opportunities. How did you see him embrace that opportunity and excel uh, on special teams? Yeah, Monty's a really competitive player, and uh, he does a really good job for us. And I believe one of the games he had three tackles uh, for us on special teams. So, you know, him just continuing to gain confidence in, in uh what his abilities are in understanding the details. Um, the more he understands that, the more he's going to gain confidence and, and be a good player for us. So I uh, really like what Monty's doing for us, whether it's on the punt team, kickoff team, running down, punt returns, one of his better uh, units, too, that he does a really good job. So I'm excited for him. Um, and hopefully he continues to uh, develop a role on, on defense, too. How but. Much, how much do you see some of the things that you ask him to do on special teams transfer to what he's required to do as a linebacker? Well, to be honest with you, it's it's a lot of the same thing. And we get a bunch of our drills from the defensive coaches, too. When we talk about punching um, on our punt team, we talk the same thing, the same terminology as Ryan Crow does with outside linebackers. So a lot of that thing correlates, um, whether it's special teams to defense, defense to special teams. We try to put a lot of things into the same terminology, uh, drills being pretty close to being the same thing. So, uh, yeah, we see some things that uh, on defense, that he might do on special teams and vice versa. Have you ever seen that illegal kicking penalty enforced before? Uh, so I've, usually, I've seen it one time where it was actually the ball was kicked into the end zone. Um, I've seen that before uh, in a game. But, uh, you know, it was, it was interesting. We had guys going down there trying to make a play for us. And, uh, you know, if that ball rolls into the end zone, we give up a touchback. And, uh, you know, Kendall probably not knowing – the whole rule of that, uh, you know, try to get back up because he was in the end zone, reestablished himself when he actually picked up his hands and then just kicked the ball. So, um, you know, we'll continue to teach. We obviously want those guys to stay on their feet as much as we possibly can to go and try to down that ball because we thought it was a really good punt, maybe a little bit better direction from Stoney. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought it ended up helping us out instead of us getting a touchback. Initially, been from a rule standpoint, since the initial contact with the ball will happen around the five yard line, should the penalty have not been assessed from the five, bring it to the 15 instead of the 10? Or yeah, I think uh, once uh, the initial contact was made there at like the five, six yard line from Chris, uh, but then the ball got the penalty was on the one yard line. Um, you know, I, I thought the rule challenge was fine going to the 11 yard line with that instead of end up going from the five. So I, I was okay with it. Um, you know, and we'll continue to work and get clarification on all rules.